Chris, how are you feeling about things these days? Because, you know, we've broken three losing weeks in a row last week. It was an upswing to the markets, and we're indicated higher this morning, too. Well, I think what's happening right now is that the market is anticipating what is expected to be a negative month over month CPI number tomorrow, which would be the first negative number we've seen since May of 2020. And that's a big deal. No matter how small the negative is, it's still a big deal. So if we get uh, CPI numbers that are within expectations or maybe even below expectations tomorrow, then we're two thirds of the way through confirming a trend downward. So anticipating some of that, but how I'm feeling in general over the next, let's call it 30 to 60 days, is that the VIX is probably stuck in this range for a little while until we can get confirmation of that trend that things are slowing and we get past maybe one more big Fed hike. So what that means about the VIX being in this range is that it's tough for the market to really break above a certain level and really break below a certain level. So we're probably going to chop along a little bit here, but I would still be ready to deploy cash. I am not one of the big bears. So we, we're worried about inflation. We're worried about the Fed's reaction to that inflation. But what about just the idea of how companies' earnings are going to start looking in this new earnings season? I mean, margins are getting compressed on a lot of sides. Do earnings expectations, earnings estimates have to come down? I still think they do need to come down. Now, look, everybody, self-included, has been warning about earnings estimates coming down for months now, and we've either been really early or just wrong. They haven't really come down. But if you look at the expectations for 2023 earnings on the S&P, about $244 a share, they'd really only have to get revised down by about 6% to show no growth year over year. So even if we got to flat year over year, that's not a great trajectory for earnings. The concerning part would be if earnings get revised down about 10 to 15 percent. Now, we've already been revised down about 3 percent for 2023. If we get to that 10 to 15 percent range, that's where it gets difficult to stay out of a recession. But it's very possible that they don't go down that far because profit margins, yes, are being squeezed. But we started this with pretty high profit margins to begin with. So if everybody's talking about it, has that idea that earnings need to get brought down, has that already worked its way through the markets with the lows we've seen recently? I think the first wave of it worked its way through markets. And what happened was a lot of leadership CEOs came out, lowered the guidance, and then we beat those expectations. The market continues to get tricked by this. We lower the bar and then we beat it and everybody gets excited. We made it through the first wave reasonably unscathed. I think there's probably a second wave to come, which could cause some volatility in October in, in particular. Liz, you think it's maybe time to start putting some cash to work. What, what would really catch your attention? I mean, if you're talking about the CPI numbers maybe coming in a little... Um, a little less hot than anticipated. We've kind of built that in over the next few days. Is this going to be a sell on the rumor or a buy on the rumor, sell on the news sort of situation? Or what do you anticipate the rest of this week? Well, I think, first of all, what we have to think about is how much are investors really willing to pay for safety in this environment? And then what does that safety look like? So just on a traditional sector basis, safe sectors are usually utilities and staples. I feel like those look pretty rich right now, a little bit overvalued, which really diminishes their ability to protect in a portfolio, which is why I would say, hold on to your cash if you have it, but be ready to deploy it. That way you don't have to sell something in order to buy something else. And then the next question is, how much are consumers, uh, I'm sorry, how much are investors willing to pay for growth and willing to pay for earnings? If you look at sectors like healthcare, that can offer you growth and it's trading at a multiple that's below the index, so a much more attractive valuation. And then a growthy sector like communications, also trading at a multiple below the, below the index, not trading at that valuation like tech is, where I still think there's vulnerability for a pullback. So I would look at those two sectors and in the short term, I would look at the two-year treasury, because if we get an inflation number that's lower than we expect or that's on the right trajectory, you mm -hmm. might see that come down. You also see that come down if more fear comes in.